Hi, welcome to my talk. Uh, today I'll present our work Kage, which is an efficient software defense against control flow hijacking attacks on embedded real-time operating system. This work is collaborated between, uh, with Zhuo Jiaxuan, Komal Darcy, and Jie Zhou from U, U of R, Robert J. Was from WPI, and John Criswell from U of R. Microcontroller-based embedded systems are being used everywhere. These low power and cheap processors are being used in areas including drones, home IoT devices, even components inside the solid state drive as the SSD controller, and in automobiles. These microcontrollers are extremely resource constrained, just like the processors from decades ago. They contain no virtual memory, they have no trust zone, they, have, um, very, they, they run in very low frequencies. And unfortunately, these limitations cause the device to lack proper security protections against the control flow hijacking problem. So the control flow hijacking is a broad category of attacks, including code injections, return to libc, return-oriented programming, or jump-oriented programming. All of them share the same commonality that they all begin by taking advantage of a buffer overflow and overwrite the control data, such as return address or function pointers. So common defenses against this type of attack are, include memory save, using memory safe languages such as Rust. Unfortunately, it's not viable as most embedded developers do use C, C++, or even assembly. We could use address space layout uh, randomization that randomize the address space every time the program executes. Unfortunately, we don't have virtual memory here, so it doesn't work. And lastly, we have shadow stack and control flow integrity check. So a shadow stack is to create a second stack that is protected that is used only to store the return address. And in combination of that, um, we also add, the, the defense also require control flow in integrity check that is essentially runtime check to make sure that all the function pointers point to the beginning of a function instead of anywhere inside the code segment. This technique has been, uh, um, this technique has existed in the desktop world for a long time, and there are in fact previous work in the embedded world as well. However, most of them focus on bare metal devices without the support of an embedded operating system, such as Care and Silhouette. Recently, Rackfish is a previous that um, uh, Rackfish is a defense system that supports operating system, real-time operating system, and enforce the shadow stack to protect the return address and use the CFI check to protect the function pointer. It also supports um, protecting the processor state during context switches by saving them to the shadow stack. However, the protection here is not complete as the, we also need to protect the processor states during interrupt entries. And in addition to that, we also need input validations for kernel API calls such that the attacker cannot simply disable other protections. And moreover, Rackfish incurs a performance overhead of 21%. And in their paper, Was et al. described that a large portion of this overhead come from the fact that each time Rackfish writes to the shadow stack to store the return address, it needs to switch from the unprivileged mode into the privileged mode, which is very expensive for this type of devices. So here we prevent Kage, which is um, a defense that utilizes shadow stack and CFI check, supports real-time operating system protects return address and function pointers, and protects pr processor state during context switch as well as interrupt entries. Kage also includes runtime checks for all the kernel API functions to ensure that attackers cannot utilize corrupted arguments to disable the protections. Kage incurs a, a, a small overhead, performance overhead of 5.19%.
So Kage is an efficient control flow hijacking defense on existing ARM v7 devices. Our, we, we implemented Kage based on free RTOS for ARM v7M devices. These are devices that with, does not have, do not have ARM trust zone. And instead, they utilize the ARM per, memory protection unit, which allows setting the access permissions for the, the one address space with read, write, and execute accesses. So here is the workflow for typical firmware developers. Instead of in the desktop world where developers write application code on top of the operating system, in the embedded world, developers typically write all the applications as well as the re embedded real-time operating system and then compile them together into a single firmware in which they then install it to the device. Here is the highlight of Kage. So Kage in, uh, includes two, two categories of protections. First, we protect the control data efficiently, then we prevent bypassing these protections. To protect the control data, we modified the, the compiler to, 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 to save the return addresses to the shadow stack and add the control flow integrity checks to check the, all the function pointers. And we, and we designed the hardened real-time operating system such that its, schedule, its scheduler will save the processor state to the shadow stack instead of the regular stack during context switch as well as, well as during exception entries. So the secret sauce for the low overhead, performance or low overhead for Kage is the store hardening technique. It is a technique that we have been used, we have used in our previous work, Silhouette. Essentially, it utilized the special unprivileged store instructions that exist in various ARM v7 architectures to simulate the unprivileged mode while running everything, including the application code as well as the kernel in privileged mode. Essentially, we compile all the application code and com transform their store instructions into the unprivileged store instructions such that they can all run in the privileged mode while behaving like unprivileged programs. So Kage also prevents attackers from bypassing the protections. We designed the real-time operating system with isolated memory regions such that the, all the applications cannot write into each other's stack memory or the kernel memory. We use small trusted computing base, removing a lot of the kernel features from the trusted computing base into unprivileged world. And we add runtime checks for all the remaining uh, functions in the kernel and such that attackers cannot, um, cannot use corrupted arguments to bypass the protections. And finally, since everything runs in the privilege mode, we need to have a sanitizer that checks for programming mistakes in the application code. For example, it checks whether the application code contains code that simply overwrites the stack pointer or calls the internal kernel functions that are not allowed, that doesn't have runtime checks. So we evaluated Kage in three different aspects. However, due to the time limit, I will only focus on the two of them. That is the performance impact on embedded application and uh, the effect and effectiveness against the real uh, return-oriented programming. We ran our ex experiments on the STM32 IoT node hardware, which is one of the officially qualified uh, certified board for AWS free RTOS. For the macro benchmark, we run CoreMark, which is the recommended uh, benchmark for, for ARM. Our baseline here is the default free RTOS operating system compiled with LVM9, which is the same compiler version we use for Kage. And we take all the results with the average of three runs. 
Here are the results for the performance evaluation. In the figure, the unit here is iterations per second, which is the official unit reported by Cormark. The high, higher number means better results. On average, Kage incurs a performance overhead of 5.19%. And we noticed that Kage incurs slightly higher overhead with more threads. This is because that with more threads, the kernel will need to context switch more times, which means that our code that protects the processor state will kick in more. And for the security evaluation, we use the same Cormark firmware with the configuration of three threads. We run ROP gadgets, that, which supports the ARM v7M instruction set to find the code reuse gadgets. Here are the results for our security evaluation. Without any protection, ROP gadgets was able to find more than 2,000 code reuse gadgets. And since there is no protection, the attacker is free to jump to any of them. With Kage, however, there are only 27 remaining gadgets left that the, uh, that the attackers can jump to. That is a 98.8% less reachable gadgets. And within these 27, 27 remaining gadgets, 17 of them are in the beginning of application function, and 10 of them are immediately after the direct call in application. This means that none of, they cannot be stitched together and therefore is unlikely to perform powerful attack. To conclude, in this presentation, we presented Kage, an efficient control flow hijacking defense for ARM v7 architectures with real-time operating system support. Kage protects control data, including return address, function pointer, and processor state. And Kage prevents bypassing the protections. Kage incurs an uh, only 5.19% perf uh, percent performance overhead in Quarmark benchmark, significantly lower than previous work. And finally, Kage is open sourced. Thank you.